what's up I'm Brian here doing another video for you guys and this time I managed to get another seeker in my collection I pretty much have every repaint of this mold except for the upcoming shattered glass star scream and I have no idea how I'm gonna get it because Hasbro pulse is just not good to me and uh, yeah I'm probably gonna need help with that on someone but uh anyways i've got this and this is the sparkless seeker so it's kind of like a no-name seeker type thing it could be whoever you want you got the kingdom artwork on the side which is pretty cool which i didn't even notice that they added shockwave on the netflix stuff but uh yes you also have the back of the packaging which shows singe and caliburst which is pretty cool and uh, of course the sparkless seeker right there anyways we are going to open it up but the first thing i want to mention is man that's a lot of uh, blank spaces right there. Couldn't fill that out with something. Anyways, let's go ahead and open it. Usually I open these things from the bottom, so that's what we're gonna do. I used to open them from the top quite often, but uh, nowadays I'm like, eh, actually the bottom's okay now. Especially with those Studio Series figures, because you just open the flaps and everything's there. Don't even have to cut the tape. Is there any tape on this side? No, there isn't. And you could already see that white sheet of paper cameo of doom thing is showing up that should be a meme at this point ah come on come on there we go okay now we can just slip out our little seeker bad guy who is a zombie Ooh, scary and there he is Ooh, i like the paint job on this yes it's crappy looking but it's meant to be crappy looking and he has his null rays on the side he's also got the blast effects and thank goodness there's no random parts on the back that uh, you have to make sure to watch out for. But I love his dark color scheme and uh, transparent light piping on the eyes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Of course, the first thing we've got to pop out is these blast effects. And uh, I do like the backdrops. The only problem with them not using plastic is you got all these holes in it. So, I mean, his head just has this big obnoxious hole now. But uh, it should be okay. I'm curious how these Battlemasters are. I really like the Battlemasters for the longest time. I wish I got the Megatron pack to get the uh, Battlemaster that came with him because I got the crosshairs. But uh, that should be Caliburst. So he's pretty cool. He comes with the same blast effect that he originally did. So that's very nice. Uh, same color too. Kind of wish they were in different colors though. But I understand why they're not. And uh, let's see. Try not to cut the uh, blast effect itself. You've got the green Mountain Dew ones. Which again, kind of wish they were in different colors. But whatever, that's fine. And uh, we can get Singe out. There he is. Kind of wish that it came with uh, Caliber and, or Singe and, uh, what's the other one, Hair Splitter or something, just so that they can have the proper duo. But uh, they look pretty cool. I especially love the paint job on Caliber. I think that looks fantastic. But uh, Singe looks pretty cool too. And these could be whoever you want. If you don't want to call them Caliber and Singe, you could call them, uh, I don't know, uh, Gray Arms and. Um, um, uh, Swamp Guy. I don't know. <laughs> but those are just not the main event of this. We gotta take a look at the Sparkless Seeker itself. Which is funny that the Sparkless Seeker is the main one that everyone's going after on this, uh, Voyager class wave. But I guess it kind of makes sense because Optimus Primal and Rat Trap, while they're good figures and there are some updates to the paint job, they're just not worth buying again if you've already got the original ones. Uh, the Rat Trap is okay, it looks a lot better than I thought it would, but uh, the Optimus Primal, it, it's just hard to notice any difference, and I, I just do not see the point in buying that, so I did not buy it. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to get this guy out of the packaging. Oh, oh, ah, there we go. There's the Sparkless Seeker out of the package, and he's got big rubber bands around him, so I need to take that off. And that's always hard, but... Uh... I always try to keep the rubber band as best as possible, as clean as possible, because maybe they'll have some use later down the road or something. I don't know. It's just a thing I do. There we go. Got that out. And uh, there he is. Still very tight joints to this day, especially on the shoulders, but I think that's just how they're painted. But uh, all the other joints seem to be pretty tight still. Uh, even the wings are, are very tight, so that's very nice. That's a good sign. Mold degradation has not really had any problems with this guy, so that's very nice. And, uh, of course, we've got the Null Rays with him. And what's cool about this figure is, since it comes with blast effects, you can use it for him. But, because it comes with the aimless blast effects, or the singe blast effects, 
You could also have even blast effects. How many times did I just say blast effects? But he does look really cool. He kind of reminds me of that Green Seeker that just suddenly suddenly showed up to uh, replace uh, Skywarp. I don't know why I said suddenly. That that's a weird word. But uh, yeah, again, transparent light piping in the eyes. Fantastic. I love the red. Uh, it, it's a very dark color, but because he's very dark, it uh, re really is noticeable. So that's nice. And, uh, yeah, he looks good with his little partners, too. I'm actually quite surprised by this whole setup. It's, it's actually quite nice. All right, so I just transformed the Calibers figure and the Aimless figure, or not Aimless, Singe figure off camera. And the reason why I did that is because we've seen this a dozen times. I mean, it's the Fire Drive mold. It's the first one to come out. And then this one, I mean, it's been used a billion times. But I wanted to take a look at them with the secret self and one thing i really like about the setup is that the color scheme seems to blend especially on that singe figure and of course you can use all the blast effects and that's very nice you know you got the green ones that go over here i love that transparent purple one and i'm so glad to have a second because i really like that blast effect especially in that color yeah that all looks pretty good I actually really like how this all comes together taking a good look at the seeker so the paint job is reminiscent of the Hotlink figure that also came out in the Netflix series. I can definitely tell with the, uh, how the uh, brown pattern is set up, so uh, that's all right. Uh, these are also still spring-loaded. Of course they would be. There's also a, a fade on the front here, so that's actually kind of nice. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's a poopy color scheme. It's a swamp-like color scheme. Also, this thing has not been popped out, which they always do for these things. I don't know why. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a poopy color scheme, but I like this color scheme. It's different. It's it's dark And uh, yeah, he could definitely sit in the backdrop of all the other seekers. He doesn't need to be dead I am gonna transform him, but I'm gonna do that off camera for two reasons one I want my fan on and I don't want that blowing in the camera and two I've got eight of these beforehand, you know eight of the same mold. I still want that uh, shared glass one, but uh, yeah you don't need to see it another time. I also really do like this. It, it, it looks like a container of mud. It, you know what that looks like? It looks like when people pour milk in Coca-Cola. <laughs> That's exactly what it looks like. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to start the transformation. Love the dark gray face, by the way. And uh, yeah, I think he comes together pretty well. All right, I got the Sparkless Seeker in alt mode. And I, I got to say, I love the color scheme, even in alt mode. It's just very dark. I can kind of picture it being hidden within like some dark clouds, some scary looking clouds, some toxic clouds maybe. It, it, it's just, it's perfect. I love that. And not only that, I'm still surprised by how tight the joints are. Mold degradation has been a thing for a long time. This is one of the most used molds in the War for Cybertron trilogy. And yet everything is tight, but not too tight to the point where I'm worried something's going to break. It's actually perfect in a way. And this is the ninth time this mold has been used. So that's quite a surprise. Um, yeah, I just, I really like it. The null rays fit in well with the color scheme as well. Uh, I like that black fade. The brown looks nice. It's just a nice looking design. I, I love the Tetra Jets. I love how clean it is. Yeah, you got legs hanging out the back, or on the bottom, I should say, but uh, it's just so nice looking. I, I can't really fault it. it. It's one of my favorite Siege designs, and, you know, still counts for this guy. So, uh, with that on the way, that is pretty much it. I thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and all those fun dudes, and I will see you guys next time.